it cannot be insanity or that she doesn't know what's going on if she's giving the police this runaround story. Yeah, she has. All right, Nima, let me let me put you on the spot here. Nima, I want to put you on the spot here. I got something just designed for you as the former federal prosecutor here. Um, Let's say that she takes the stand and let's say that she tells the jury, listen, ladies and gentlemen, the end of the world is coming. I know it was coming. And, And I knew about this 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 horrible pandemic and plague that is scourging the earth. I have put my children with some people socially distanced away from society (laughs) so they can survive. And I'm not going to tell you where they are, ladies and gentlemen, because I don't want the government coming in and grabbing my kids and exposing them to all this that is happening in our world right now. What on earth, as a prosecutor, how do you react to that if that happens? Yeah, look, I mean, it's a defense. It's not a good defense, right? She has a responsibility for those kids. She adopted JJ. He's special needs. You know, you can't just say, I'm not telling the government where my adopted special needs seven-year-old child is and hope that the jury is going to believe that story. I mean, she's the mother of these children. They've been missing since September. It's one false story after another while she's living her best life, as Sarah was saying, in Hawaii and traveling the country. So... Look, she can come up with any defense that she wants. I just don't think that's a good defense. And she really has no defense. That's why no defense attorney wants to take this case. And it's just a slow, inevitable march towards trial. And she's going to be found guilty. Michael, what what if she says that to you?